NCAA National Championship and more up next on Sports Bar. We didn't have a show last week, so we're about two weeks behind when it comes to the tournament. We've missed, a, or well, we haven't missed it, but we haven't talked about a lot of things. Um, coming up to this point, we'll get to the actual national championship later. Coming up to this point, what do you think have been some of the most surprising things over the past two weeks in the tournament? I mean, just recently, the performance from Oklahoma against Villanova, I mean, I don't think a lot of people would have thought that they would have came out Not and laid that kind of an egg. And considering that Oklahoma was top five in the nation yeah. in three-point uh, you know, field goal percentage, I think I'm pretty sure they were second in the nation uh, coming into the tournament. Just having such a poor performance uh, very, you know, really shocked me. Um, and, you know, it goes to show when Buddy Hill, you know, kind of doesn't have his game going, I think he finished with nine <clears throat> yeah, in that game. Yeah, he single digits when yeah, he averages over know, 20, usually. When they run a seven-man rotation and he's going – averaging 30. And didn't they play before the, yes. the tournament as Oklahoma, well? And Oklahoma yeah. beat them. Oklahoma beat them by 20 some odd points. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Atl the Atlantis tournament, which is actually in the Bahamas, which is where oh, Buddy Hill is from. from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they, they won easily that game, which oddly enough, it was kind of the reverse. Um, I went back and watched some of that. Uh, Villanova couldn't hit anything in yeah. that, you know, uh, in that game. So. Obviously, I mean, if Oklahoma had their druthers, I'm pretty sure they would rather lose that game and you know, win, uh, win the Final Four. But um, Villanova certainly poses a, a serious threat to North Carolina. For uh, sure. I mean, I, we, we all knew that Villanova had a good team. And coming into this, I, I saw big things for Villanova, especially after they knocked off Kansas. That, that was a surprise to me. I knew that it was going to be a close game, but I actually didn't think that they would pull it through. Um, so yeah, coming up to the tournament against UNC, UNC has had some tough opponents, but not like Villanova's had so far, and they've managed to pull through and uh, you know win it. Actually, so you sort of jumped the gun. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and do this. Our score of the week was actually the uh, Villanova-Oklahoma game, if we could just bring that up real fast. So it was 95-51, I believe. Effect, yeah. And so, um, um, I mean, I it wasn't much of a game, honestly. It really I mean, wasn't. What, what was your thoughts? On oh, I, I was just, I was really hopeful for Buddy Heald, man. I, I, you can tell, you can tell from uh, our last show too. I was, I was, all, all in on Buddy Heald yeah. for the game, and him just scoring seven points. Is, it was hard to watch. It was, it was hard to watch, but it was good to see Villanova play so well because they have, they also have a freshman named Hart, I believe, and he, he was electrifying in that game as yeah, well. Joe Hart. Joe Hart, I, yes. You know, Oklahoma, Buddy Heald, Jeff Goodman uh, from ESPN uh, went down to where he was from. He did, he did a wonderful cover story on kind of like his, uh, his growing up. And it's hard not to root for the guy after, after seeing that story. And, um, you know, you, at least I think of the Bahamas as being, you know, this you know, tropical paradise, you know, which it is. But, you know. There's more reality it is, to it than yeah, that. Yeah, certainly. I mean, like, once you get off the, the Atlantis resort, you know, uh, <laughs> things fall off pretty quickly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, seeing where he, like, shot baskets in a, in a milk crate uh, it was kind of eye-opening and to see, you know, where he is now. So uh, I'll certainly be rooting for him in his NBA career. Um, Which was, yeah. I think it should be pretty yeah. set, too. He's no, no, I mean, very good basketball player. He'll certainly go top five. He gets, uh, gets uh, shout-outs from LeBron. He gets shout-outs from Kobe. I mean, yeah. what else do you want as uh, a college player? Me, personally, I take him over Ben Simmons, but that, that's sure. another story. So um, uh, Ben Simmons is another prospect. Who else, who else do you see uh, that would have a good impact in the NBA, probably a long career? It's hard to tell. A lot of times people get in there and just – don't actually live up to the expectation, but I feel like there's a lot in this uh, upcoming class that are pretty decent. I'll tell you who I'm excited about. I mean, I love UNC, don't get me wrong, but Bryce Johnson for mm -hmm. the past three, four years. Mr. Double-Double. For sure, Mr. Double-Double, mm -hmm. and, and that's what the NBA likes to see. NBA likes to see consistent production, and Bryce Johnson has been showing it all season. 
Yeah. So I think, and he's been carried by a great Carolina team as well. And I mean, well, he's he's one of the reasons why UNC is doing so well. He uh, he's the, the main numbers, reason, yeah, the numbers for the offensive boards and stuff. A lot of those are him. Uh, he gets putbacks off the rebound. Uh, he knows when to pass it, when to go in. He's just a great all-around player. He's he's a good team player, which is something that Roy Williams does yeah. really well. I, now I would say. Frankly, in my opinion, I think Bryce Johnson will have a solid NBA career, and he'll he'll go pretty high in the draft. I think Justin Jackson has the most mm. potential off that oh. squad. Okay. Uh, you know, just from the, the, well, the way the wing position has really developed in the NBA. Uh, you know, the guy's six nine, six ten. His length and his uh, shot accuracy. You know, is, I mean, is, well, his shot's been kind of so-so from from three most of this year, but he I has mean, been coming the, on. Most of the team has been so-so from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, well, I think Joel Berry right now is probably the most consistent three-point shooter for the squad. Yes. But, uh, but but I think Justin Jackson probably has the most NBA potential. But you were talking about, you know, just nationally, um, the 15-16 season really has kind of been the year of the senior mm -hmm. uh, in many ways. I mean, you, a lot of the um, the Murray kid from Kentucky, uh, he, who's a freshman, he's coming out for the draft. I'm sure he'll go really high. Um, but outside of maybe Simmons, I don't necessarily see the, the surefire lock kind of guys from, from the freshman class. Mm. Um, I really like Suleiman uh, from Maryland, you know, mm. who did play for Duke. You used to play for Duke, um, yes. I mean, I, I thought he kind of faded there as, as a Blue Devil, but then has really came on very strong. Came on um, very strong at uh, Maryland. He came yeah, so, I mean, I, I And they really had a good tournament, too. So I, he's been a leader for that team since he, was tra since he transferred there. Yeah. And I think the NBA can see that, that if you can come out of one situation and still in, in, at Duke, and then thrive in Maryland, a totally different conference, and then yeah. a totally different team, and he, he can still produce. And so the NBA, I think, would definitely uh, be fond of Rashid yeah. Suleiman. And him being a fifth-year senior kind of guy, you know, he's expected just to walk onto that team and immediately contribute, not mm -hmm. ride the pine for three years, yeah. and then maybe he's, get a, he's been on a team long enough to where you know you don't have to worry about like. So I, I feel like one of the big problems with going from high school to freshman to the league is just like three different teams, three different years. You you never build up that team chemistry. But some people are 17 years old. Yeah, still. Yeah, I mean, it's it's craziness. Uh, Which actually there was a uh, someone who. Thon like Maker, sick, yeah, I think you were talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, who's declaring out of high school to try and go, but he's like six something, maybe six, to close be a, to seven. Well, that has to be a special exception. Uh, I, I'm not. I wasn't aware of that story, but yeah, it's it has be, to be a special exception because, I mean, I think he he's might still required by the league to, to go play to college. Year of college yeah. So I'm not sure what the story is there. Yeah, but, uh, I, it just said that someone was declaring. Uh, we'll look more into I don't it. Know if he's, is he an international player? Uh, he might be an international player. If he's player. an international player, then that might explain that. But yeah. another story. But um, so aside from you know the past weekend of games, uh, the UNC versus Syracuse, Villanova versus Oklahoma. Uh, what was what was anything else that like I was saying one of the big surprises for me was the Villanova Kansas upset uh, was there anything else that y'all saw I I personally think the Syracuse making it this far was a surprise in itself just ACC Final Four half of it yeah, yeah. That, was, that was kind of neat as an ACC homer you know Woo. you know not only the Final Four but the, the Elite Eight and the Sweet Sixteen yeah. it was pretty fun and I mean was, uh, earlier. Uh, at one of our earlier episodes, you were talking about how uh, Syracuse shouldn't even be in the tournament. Well, I it mean, was, I, I think there was a good case for them not it to was. be. They, they, they I mean, were they violated. Had 13 losses heading into the tournament yeah. and didn't really have that many quality wins. But they can play zone and they can play defense uh, against anybody. I, and <laughs> that 2-3 uh, zone, man, Jim Beheim. Uh, I get so disgusted of the coverage of Syracuse. That's like the only thing anyone ever knows about the Syracuse team. You know, it's like, no, we're not going to talk about the Joss Richardson kid. No. Nope. Like how good he is. No, it's defense. like, it's all about that 2-3 zone defense and, and how it's such a unicorn in college basketball and how no one knows how to defend it. I mean, which in ways is kind of true, but at the same same time, let's come up with it's something old. else to talk about. Man. Like it, it is so old, and and it, you know, it's. I think Roy Williams and, and, and Carolina, you know, showed in this past game and the two other games uh, they played, you know, kind of how to, to break that down. Because if you have that front court size, and if you have if you have someone who can pass the ball really well out of the high post, get to the free throw line, and knows how to distribute, which you know isn't necessarily a skill that a lot of big guys have, but it is a skill that Kennedy Meeks, Bryce Johnson, mm. really Isaiah Hicks, the whole front court for Carolina had, um, you know, it's, it's bucket after bucket because you're essentially playing uh, almost a man down where in, those, in those areas. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's 
this, this craziness, but uh, I, I do wish we could move on from, well, from that. I was going to say, do you think that um, you mentioned we did play them twice in the regular season and we played them again in the tournament. Do you think that that, that... that we word. <laughs> Sorry, UNC. I, I'm a Carolina fan, but yeah. you can write <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, do you think that UNC playing them uh, during the regular season and everything helped lead them to this win since they've already played them, they saw the 2-3, they've you know, beaten it twice before. I feel like a lot of the reason why the other teams didn't, they hadn't played against anyone else that had done that. Do you think that, say, if Syracuse was uh, back in their old conference, Big East. yeah, uh, if they were back in the Big East, do you think that UNC would have had the same game that they had against Syracuse this game? I mean, I could say, it, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily have picked them to lose that game mm -hmm. uh, still, but I mean, it certainly does help. I mean, not only having tape on them from, yeah, I mean, a lot of squads go back a year before. I mean, you played them twice in the regular yeah. season. And they actually um, usually play, don't they? Usually play in the off season, in the, like before, before conference I mean, play. They have played several times yeah. in, uh, you know, tournaments and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it certainly helps. Mm -hmm. uh, having, you know, like I said, tape on your team and their team the same year um, and just having that experience, breaking it down. Because um, the game – at the uh, the Carrier Dome went swimmingly for Carolina. Yes. However, the game in Chapel Hill was actually very kind of close. A struggle. Very close. Uh, Carolina got out to a big lead, and then uh, Cuse came back and made it a five point game with like three minutes to go. So, um, but it, I mean, it certainly helps. Yeah. To separate from all that, what do you, who do you guys think had the easiest trail to the tournament? I was I've been thinking the, the, for the past like week. I think I think UNC really did have a pretty easy going to yeah. to the Final Four. So we're talking out of are we talking out of the Final Four? Or are we talking out of Villanova, UNC, who had the easiest? I I, I feel like it would still be UNC. Um, yeah. But if we were doing Final Four, Q's had a decently easy time. Villanova worked to get here. Villanova definitely worked the hardest yeah. for sure yeah. to get to the Final Four, yeah. but. UNC, but I think there are people who are kind of underestimating UNC maybe to I mean, go on the way there. Frankly, I, I think Providence that they played in the Sweet 16 was, was a better squad than Syracuse. Uh, I think the same thing. I can agree in, with that. In ways, I think the same thing can be said for Indiana just because they have Yogi Ferrell and yeah. that kid is going to be dynamite in the NBA. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. Carolina probably didn't have the, the easiest road. Um, but for Villanova, you know, Jay Wright – if not for this season, if not for them making the, the final, um, there were some rumblings there with, with, with Nova because, you know, they hadn't made it into the second weekend of the tournament in quite some time. I mean, Villanova has only one national championship to their name, but, well, it should have been two. There was one in the 70s, but, uh, well, they, they made a, a championship appearance in the 70s, but that got erased because of uh, violations. But, um, you know, that school having as much tradition as they do there was people that said, hey, Jay, Jay Wright might get fired after this year. So this was very important both for the, yeah. for, for the team who had a lot of seniors and, you know, for, for him. So extra motivation there to, to get sure. to the final Great four to get to contract. the game. <laughs> uh, and you know they'll be playing with a lot of fire tonight. So, yeah. so tonight, like you were saying, is the national championship. Who are you taking and why? Like, what, what do you think is going to be the determining factor of this game? As a Carolina fan, I am scared. I'm scared for sure because Villanova putting like maybe Buddy Heald is uh, uh, a factor in in Oklahoma's game at like as big a factor as he is and him not shooting as well uh, didn't really work for uh, that Villanova Oklahoma game mm -hmm. but Villanova looked looked big strong and their their passing's quick their shooting percentage is pretty good and and Maybe it's whoever wins on the offensive glass, I think. Whoever has the most offensive rebounds, they'll probably win this game. And for that reason, that's why I like Carolina in this game. Mm. Um, I mean, certainly I, I think Villanova has more size to compete with Carolina in the front court than did Syracuse. Um, but really outside of one to, to two guys max, um, I, I don't think they can really match up uh, you know, guy for guy. Um, it, you make a good point. If they can get on the glass, uh, if they can control the rebounds, if you mentioned Bryce Johnson having putbacks, you know that's a huge part of his offense. If he can, if he's allowed to do that, um, I think it'll be a good night for Carolina. But 
I would like to see them hit just a few more shots <laughs> from, from outside than yeah. they did against Syracuse because against Syracuse, that advantage in the front court was so large that they honestly didn't need they the rode, They rode shooting. that through the whole I game. Mean, they, yeah, if they hadn't have shot a three the whole, the whole game, they would have still won by like five or six. Yes. But they need something out of Page. They need something out of Barry. Um, even Nate Britt, Justin Jackson, Jackson, you know, at least a little. Hit – hit four threes in the game, and I think, you know, total, I, I think they'll, you know, have enough. But. It's going to be a big game for these seniors, too. They, oh, yeah. They, they have been waiting for this. They've been to the, the tournament, what, the last two or three years? Carolina uh, has. This squad, uh, this squad's never missed the tournament. Yeah, they've never missed the tournament, and they've been yeah. there every year. And the finally, last time Carolina missed the tournment was 2010. That's so, when they did the MIT. Yeah. That yeah, was the that MIT was a depressed. With, uh, that was with Larry Drew and, and that whole. Thing. Oh my God, but, uh, Larry Drew. Larry Drew. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, a, the best thing about Larry Drew was his dad. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm picking Carolina. I think I'll be picking Carolina. Picking Carolina. Well. I'm, I'm hoping it's Carolina. Robin hopes yeah. Carolina. So um, <laughs> I mean, I I, I got to take them. Uh, our brackets show. Well, did you take Oklahoma? I, I took Carolina on my bracket. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. So it's an all Carolina. There we go. Bracket then. And then. How surprising. All uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Unless there was anything else you wanted to say about tournament. I'm, I, I I'm feel like we've hit to talk it all. About Abby Wambach. Um, all right. Uh, I was going to shift to the NBA, but we can go ahead and move on to soccer if you want to. You, got, you take the roles well, on I didn't Abby mean Wambach. Jump the gun here, but uh, Abby Wambach recently, uh, the last, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, got arrested in the early morning mm -hmm. uh, in Oregon for, for a DUI. She'd been to a friend's house, uh, and evidently they had had dinner, and she released a public apology, saying how that you know she felt like she was an embarrassment to her family and and wow. you know, women's soccer in general, particularly uh, w with the timing. Uh, she mentioned that you know reflecting poorly on. Uh, how they're they're trying to you know fight for for more equality yes more uh, compensation and, uh, on the on the U.S. you know soccer level and I don't know how you feel about the compensation and, and them being you know considered equal but I mean you look at the history of you know women's <laughs> soccer uh, you know with the national team for the United States and there's no comparison as a fan you have to feel a little bit conflicted because the men's soccer team don't get me wrong very talented team they've never won a World Cup. Uh, I think the strongest outing they had is uh, they had, a uh, semifinal in, in like the 40s or the 50s or something. Yeah. Very long time ago. 1930-something, I think. <sighs> yeah. But the, the women's team has been sensational yeah. uh, for the last 20 years. Yeah. Uh, and when, whenever you see like all that consistency, I think it should be compensated. Uh, three uh, World Cups. Uh, Constant uh, finals appearances. World players of the year. Yes, yeah. world players. Speaking of Abby Wambach. Yes, Abby uh, Wambach. And, and you know. I mean, just to, it goes to show uh, her PR was really serious. Or it was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a DUI is very serious for uh, an athlete these days, and uh, they have to. They have to look good to just. Uh, make this lawsuit go through and smooth yeah. for them as well. They have to come out. I, as a fan, I want them to be compensated fairly. Now, playing a little bit of devil's advocate, uh, we know that a lot of times like the men's league teams get paid more than the women's just in general. Um, yes, they are world champions. Uh, they play their hearts out. And I mean, honestly, that's the only time I really watch women's soccer is when the US women's team is on. But do you think that? the competition factor might have something to do with it. Like, I, you know, I don't really see any Ronaldos or Messis or anything on, like, any women's teams. I mean, I, I personally do want them to be compensated more. They do show out. They bring in more money than the men's team and all that. But do you think that maybe the competition has something to do with the compensation? Aspect? Well, I think you could made that argument 15 years ago. Uh, but I think the women's, uh, you know, game internationally has exploded mm -hmm. in the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, e your traditional European powers are s beginning to actually pay attention to, to women's soccer, at least at the international level. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the professional leagues in, in England and, you know, the, the Liverpool women and things like that. So uh, they're doing about as well as the WNBA, probably. Yeah, well, actually, the WNBA, I would say, is doing much better probably. than um, But at the international level, uh, you are seeing the, the the quality of play, you know, really, you know, really be risen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, when the U.S. won their first World Cup championship against China in '99, uh, or in '95, um, you know, r at that time, 
the U.S. and China was really the only two countries that really fielded what you could say was, yeah. was a professional science. Uh, but you know, now I would say you have at least a dozen uh, countries that you know are good enough to make serious runs. Maybe still only three that you actually consider to be you know World Cup contenders. But that's you know that's the same way with the men. It's the exact uh, same. Yeah, at, at, you know, at, at the top, it's usually the it's, same teams too: exactly. Germany, Brazil, France. The cream England. is different at the top. Exactly. But, uh, but I, I think it's, it's certainly changed. Uh, would you agree? I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. So, say that this were different, like the men's team was fighting for more uh, equal pay and all that. Do you think that if one of them got a DUI? Do you think they would have gone out and like made this public apology and like tried to fight more, or do you think like it would just be handed to them? Sort of like? Matters how how your PR wants to handle it, I guess. I, I, I would believe. I think this day and age, right now, a DUI uh, is on Sports Center and like mm -hmm. the next day. Mm -hmm. So I think a P, the PR has to be really strong and very uh, and ha, have to communicate and aggressive uh, with uh, with their clients if they if they get, get a DUI like that, especially an athlete. Yeah, uh, I would say that it would somewhat depend on you know who it is. Uh, I mean, with the women's team, if it not been for Abby Wanbach, if it was a backup goalie, and then, then probably I, I would think have this been is on, essentially on the news. an on-story. So yeah. like Dempsey it, it, was the one that Dempsey, you know, even Donovan since he's retired. I mean, Abby Wanbach's retired, so um, but but she's who she is. Donovan's who he is. If this would have happened to him, that would have certainly still been a story. Like you say, Dempsey, um, you know, if DeAndre Yedlin had yeah. done this, this that would have been more of a story in England yeah. than in the States. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it definitely depends on you know who they who and when who yeah. when and, and those kind of scenarios. All right, so um, we do only have about five minutes left. Let's go ahead and move on over to the NBA. Uh, the Celtics just actually clinched their playoff spot. Uh, Don't we have a play of the week? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Uh, so let's go ahead and show the play of the week that we have for you, uh, which was from the Celtics game against the Warriors. Uh, the reason this is play of the week is because it's just not like Steph Curry to miss a shot like this. We're just Pretty not much used wide to open. it, man. He misses. Not used um, to it at all. Harrison Barnes could have passed it to him, but you don't have time to think of that situation. Now, I will point out uh, coming up soon that Marcus Smart. This gets. should have been called for something. He tackled a guy to get well, everyone open. Listen, Poor Marcus Smart. Listen, I, I, you can't. Uh, I, I'm not looking. Well, are, well, in, in the case of, are, were you looking for for the for the call to be on the Celtics there, where he tackled? Draymond Green or when Draymond no. Green tackled when the Dray other guy? Draymond Green because, put because a there, there's Dray several fouls right there. That yeah. was Let's great tackling that for him. Though. Great yeah. tackling for uh, him. Several fouls <laughs> that happened there, um, but. I, Listen, I, I'm not really one to, to kind of ride the pity party for, for the Well, it did in their, the it did in their home uh, win streak, though. Stopped them at 54. Oh, yeah. So. Now, I, I personally, that, that's why that was such a big deal. It stopped the streak. For, for me, I'm already up and over uh, the hill of, you know, Steph and Draymond and everyone just being these, this cute <laughs> team of, like, shooters and everyone looks like they're 13 years old. I don't care. Uh, you know, these guys are good. And when you're good in American sports, you're hated. And I hate them with, with so much fervor. Um, I, I, I've never really been a huge Spurs fan, but since the Warriors have came on recently, uh, uh, Spurs all day. Spurs all but day. But Spurs win just as much if you think oh, about no, no, it. No, no, no. Trust me. Like, but they don't get the attention. They don't get, they don't get the, the attention. Winning. I don't know. Pop, something about him. And not that Steve Kerr isn't a good guy. Um, I, and, and as a Hornets fan, it's a little odd because I really like Del Curry. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just can't stand Steph. And it's just because he's good. Uh, you know, uh, that, that happens to everyone. I, I, don't gonna like, hate. I don't like LeBron. He's good. You know, I, well, you can like him probably in like the next year or so because he's, he's probably not well, going to hey, win. He's, that's another thing, too. People have really been overlooking how terrific LeBron James still is just because of Steph Curry. But um, terrific play of the week. Yeah. Uh, good choice. But... Um, <laughs> And, and that was that was huge. I mean, them losing their home win streak. Boston, yeah, I mean, if, if it was Steph, like, making a shot, it wouldn't be play of the week. But it ended the win streak. It put Boston in the chance to clinch a spot, which they did clinch it. And, like, just a lot of things happened in that one play. So that's, that's why it was play of the week. Um, so how, how do you see it panning out? We are talking about the NCAA tournament, uh, but that ends tonight. We're going to have to talk about the NBA finals coming up. Uh, do you see... Anything happening with 
uh, the Warriors, the Hornets, Celtics, Spurs. Like everybody's the, waiting for the Spurs versus the Warriors, and then in the Western if, Conference Finals. In the Western but, Conference Finals. But I think the thing to talk about is definitely the Eastern Conference Finals. Who do you think, Travis? Well, I mean, the Cavs. I think will be there, Cavs and then the after there, yeah. the Cavs. Honestly, I don't really know. Up in the air? I think it's pretty up in the air. I mean, Do Toronto. Do the Hornets have a good chance? Well, I wouldn't say they have a good chance. Uh, I think they have a decent chance a to chance. win their opening round playoff series, which, I mean, that would be massive for the city of Charlotte. Uh, yeah. Keep in mind that they haven't even won a single playoff game as the Bobcats or since they've switched over to the Hornets, mm -hmm. uh, since the Hornets franchise left yeah. initially. Uh, that's been a while. So that would be huge for the city. Um, you know, I think that the Hornets can finish the season as a three seed um, in, in the Eastern Conference. And if they can, you know, they'd be playing um, or they would obviously have home court advantage, which would be huge. Yeah. Um, right, well, I guess at this point, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm going to have to cut you off. We are out of time. So uh, as always, I'd like to invite you to leave your questions, comments, concerns, anything like that at www.watchapptv.com. Don't forget to watch the game tonight. Uh, let us know how you feel about the outcome. And until next time, I'm Robin Palmer.